All right, thank you. Happy Monday. Welcome everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Jody Lavasse, one of the learning experts at Homer, and I just want to thank you so much for joining us live. If you have any questions at any point, please go ahead and pop those into the comment section and we will get to those. And I'm really excited to welcome our special guest here today. Uh, today we have Brian Yanish as one of our Ask the Expert experts. Thank you for being here today, Brian. Thanks, Jody. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited uh, to have this conversation because, you know, as, as we all know, everybody is, you know, quarantining at home and spending a lot of extra time uh, in the same rooms. So I was hoping today we could talk about this idea of, you know, where creativity comes specifically by using the stuff you already have at home. Absolutely. We are going to get into that. And I'm so excited, um, especially given the fact that, you know, it's really hard for us to go out and get new materials right now. It's hard to buy anything that we don't absolutely need. And so one of the reasons I love what Brian does so much is that he helps kids really look at things in a new way. And we're going to talk a lot more about that. So Brian is a children's author and illustrator. He's founder of Scrapkins, which is an interactive recycled arts program for kids ages five to 10. And what Brian does, um, again, is really help kids see the creative potential in everyday junk or things around the house. Um, Brian has worked with the Jim Henson Productions Company and even appeared on Sesame Street. So we are very lucky to have you today um, to talk about how to spark creativity, how to get kids to see things in a new way, um, and really how to do some hands-on learning and playing. So great fit for Homer. Um, we're really excited. Not only are we going to talk about this today, but you're going to be back again tomorrow to actually lead a session. So um, for parents watching today, please tune back in again tomorrow with your kids. Um, and Brian's going to walk you through this beautiful project right here, this pirate ship. Um, and the pirate ship is a great tie in. We've known Brian's work for a long time. He actually has a story um, in our Homer Stories app. It's called The Pirates of Smelly Cove, and it's super cute. Um, so definitely check that out. Maybe you and your child can listen to Pirates of Smelly Cove today and then come back tomorrow and actually make a pirate ship. So uh, that's super exciting. Um, Brian, let's start off with the first question, um, which is you're currently hosting Scrapkins Builders Club every Wednesday on Facebook at 1230. What inspired you to start that work? Well, what's really interesting is that you'll, you'll see that I'm in the workshop where I've been doing the videos from. This is actually the workshop of my parents' home. I've been quarantining with them. Um, and a lot of my creativity actually started in a place like a workshop because when I was young, I would go to, I would go and just glue things together like pieces of wood. And I was already trying to be creative just using what I had. So when, you know, this whole thing happened with the pandemic and I, you know, I like many was stuck at home. I said, well, I can take the things that I've learned through the book and really start to do some of these as videos to use these materials that kids already have. So I've been taking basically the books, uh, the projects right from Junk Rethunk, which is my second book, which is a do-it-yourself guide to making all these interesting projects. I've got a couple of them on the desk here. And then basically I'm going to my recycling bin, which is basically my creative uh, idea sparker. And I'm just starting to look at some of these you know, containers and cartons that everybody has and what can we create out of these same basic shapes? Because the reason I called the book Junk Rethunk was a lot of people just see this as junk and things that mm -hmm. they just toss in the bin. Mm -hmm. and they don't think about it twice, but I actually think of these as building blocks for creating art. So every one of my art projects is made out of basic things like cereal boxes and all this stuff that you see but what we're trying to do with the books is actually get you to see that tube and you go like, oh, that's not just a tube. This right. can be a, a character that I can create. Maybe we can create a rocket, things like that. So it really is about rethinking those things you see around you. Yeah. I love that, Brian. And, and you, you talked a lot about how to spark that idea in a child. And it really makes me think that 
approaching the world in this way supports so much creativity and self-expression. Um, can you talk a, a little bit about what other sort of educational benefits there might be in, in this approach? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the idea of rethinking things and building and trying to think about things in a new way for me is all about, as you said, coming up with some of that creativity, but also it's problem solving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can, we can show kids the instructions on how to make this pirate ship. But one of the things I like about Scrapkins is the philosophy is to use whatever you have. So right. you might not have a milk carton that looks like this. You may have a different shape. You may have a small one. You may not even have that. You may have a plastic bottle. So what I like to say is like, okay, well, if we're trying to go with that concept of creativity and problem solving, if I don't have a milk carton, can I create a ship out of a plastic bottle that also floats? So it's a little bit about design thinking in a way. It's right. almost like you're right. building a prototype. Yeah. And often when engineers build things is the first time they create something, like here's another example. Here's a, um, a digger that we created or like a scooper. I had to come up with a lot of different ways of doing this based on one of these rectangular milk cartons. And believe me, the first time I created it, it looked nothing like this. So it really <laughs> was building a prototype. Does it work? Um, yeah. Is it easy enough that I could teach it to somebody else? Because if it has 200 steps, that's going to be really difficult right. to follow. Right. So the idea of playing around with the materials, um, really solving those problems, like how do we get these wheels to turn? And is there a better way of doing that? So one of the nice things about creating a project and saying, we are going to do a pirate ship is often the kids are the ones who come up with a totally different way of doing it that I never would have thought of because they're playing around those materials. They're putting them together. If it doesn't work, you can just take them apart. I mean, they're just pieces of junk that you find around the house. So it's not right. like we're being really precious with these materials. Right. right. I love that. Um, you know, as you're talking about sort of using your hands and figuring things out, it really brings to mind for me, um, this, this study that Dr. Stuart Brown outlines in his book called Play, which obviously is all about the importance of play. Um, and what he talked about was that at Caltech's Jet Propulsion Lab, um, there was a ton of engineers who had sort of joined in the 60s and they were reaching retirement age and they were retiring out of the Jet Propulsion Lab. And the hiring team there needed a bunch of new engineers. And so they hired engineers that were top of their class at MIT and other fantastic schools. Um, but what they discovered was that many of these engineers, while they had all the mathematical knowledge, they knew all of the theory, they really struggled to put that theory into practice. And so what they, what they ended up finding was that the engineers that had really played with their hands and had either taken things apart to discover you know, what's inside of this appliance or this clock or this radio, or they had you know, put things together and created things, whether it was a, you know, a soapbox or a, you know, or, or a robot you know, or, a, or a, a monster made of things around the house. Um, those were the engineers that could really take theory and put it into practice and problem solve. And so I just love this idea of, of hands-on play, of taking things apart and really thinking about things um, in a brand new way. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's a little bit messy or sometimes that requires kids to have some perseverance or some, you know, some grit. What are some of the barriers that you see um, in terms of kids sort of tapping into this this activity and this type of creativity? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, sometimes you'll get the idea of kids who sit down and they don't know what to make right away. Yeah. Um, that's why um, creating things like challenges to kind of frame the creativity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you say, okay, you have to take three of these items that you see in front of you, whatever they happen to be. And mm -hmm. instead of saying, let's create a specific thing, like a spaceship, you could say, why don't you try to create something that flies that way? It's mm -hmm. sort of open-ended and they're not right. trying to create something specific. Cause they might say like, well, I had this vision of, I wanted to make a glider or I wanted to make a, you know, supersonic airplane. So I find that the challenge often works well to spark creativity for kids who don't specifically know how to start. Right. You know, right. Kids will look at the stuff and be like, oh, I know what I want to do right away. But if you say, okay, you've got all these boxes, you know, 
can you build a city out of these boxes for one of your stuffed animals or one of your favorite characters? Because the thing that I really like is, yes, we are calling this stuff arts and crafts, but to be able to play with it is really the important thing. Can you interact with the project after you've created it? Ah, I that's I like really that. where you find a lot of the joy yeah. in the creativity is, is the play, as we talked about with the engineers. Yeah. So it's not just about the building. It's really about the building and then the playing afterwards for you. Yeah. I've worked pretty hard to create the projects that you can actually interact with. So as I said, like, you know, the boat we'll be doing tomorrow. What's really awesome about this is this will actually float on top of the water, which yeah. so after you create your pirate ship, you can actually sail it, you know. And that's, yeah. that's something that kids don't necessarily believe that this is going to float. Right. So I like the things that you can interact. And this is another project, which is a, um, is a puppet. So after you create your puppet, maybe you're creating a puppet show, which you could do on Zoom for your family or your friend. Right. So the idea is, first, the creativity comes in. How do I envision this? And how do I create this puppet? And the second part of it is, can we create a performance or can we play with it? And I know, particularly with Homer, this goes a lot into the idea of storytelling. Right, yeah, exactly. That's a big part of us. You mentioned like storytelling and puppet shows. Are, is, is characters and bringing characters to life something that you think parents can support in the home? Absolutely. I think, I think the idea of creating a character is one of the strongest ways to connect to the creative process. Mm -hmm. uh, because let's say, for example, you have this cardboard tube, which everybody has these toilet paper tubes. <laughs> in. But, you know, the simple idea of saying, instead of creating maybe something decorative, like, uh, you know, you could do a telescope, of course. But I like the idea of like, can we create a character? And this is the way I think about even when I'm writing books, if suddenly I'm creating a character and this little monster has three eyes and he's got um, he's got arms and he's got feet, but I want to know more about who this character is. Mm -hmm. this, what's the character's name? So suddenly if he's named Three-Eyed the Monster, and we also know that he's terrified of the rain, right. we are starting to figure out some interesting things about who this character is. So often I, I will create a character, and as I'm building and just sort of making it up, I'm coming up with a character. And so yeah. I, suddenly I've got a friend. And so if I've got a friend, that's a much stronger connection than if I'm just creating something that's a static piece that just sits there. Suddenly we've got this three-eyed monster. We want to now write a story about what this three-eyed monster does on a rainy day because he's scared of the rain. Mm -hmm. So the idea of storytelling and building up that character is often a really fun way to um, sort of spark the creativity. Yeah, I like that. And that, and that really relates to a lot of the work that we're doing at Homer as well with some of our, our storytelling um, experiences as well, where we invite kids to like drag stickers onto a storyboard and really create an entire narrative around what they want to, what they want to say about the experience that they've created. So that's sort of a, a digital iteration of what you're describing um, with physical products. So I love that so much. Um, at what age would you say that this uh, creativity or, or building these types of experiences um, are relevant for? Well, I mean, I think as kind of young as you can get your kids involved with the idea of creativity, obviously with toddlers, you're going to want a lot of parent parental supervision. Right. Um, now, for my particular projects in the books, you know, we're really five to 10. But one of the nice things I, I like to think about is any one of these projects could be simplified or made more complicated just basically based on the number of steps or how they're going to sort of design their their project so you know if you're going back to the pirate ship you know a 11 year old is going to make a really cool pirate ship with all these features and cannons and things like that right. but if you were working with you know a very young child who may be four and the parent is working with the child parent might be doing a lot of the construction, whereas the child is doing the decorating. So I think it's right, the idea right. of getting them involved as early as you can to just start working with those, manipulating those shapes, start learning about the tools that you use to create. Um, and, you know, maybe they're just coloring something and you're using that to decorate a project that you're making together. 
Yeah, I like that. And we know that co-play is so important for like social emotional skills and the bonding with parent and child, but also the verbal skills. There's a lot of, of talk that happens when a parent and child are, are building something together. Um, in addition with this idea of like empowering the child, even if they're not uh, able to maybe use scissors yet, they can help the parent understand how they want the paper to be cut and the parent sort of follows the child's lead. Um, I think that can be a really successful partnership as well. So that sounds great. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of, I, I'm seeing the videos pop up, you know, while people are at home. And of course they're getting things shipped to them. So they've got these extra cardboard boxes. And it right. always goes back to the idea, which comes up repeatedly about sometimes the box being more fun than yeah. the, the <laughs> What's inside, yeah. And, you know, having that idea of, you know, the child sort of creating that free play with just that empty box of where that where they want to go with that is often a really good starting point of saying you know th they see it as a fort and then suddenly the siblings and the parents are involved in helping to yeah. create that uh you know in a in a um as you said a co-play sort of way yeah yeah i love that you know, we've been thinking a lot about sort of off screen activities. Obviously, we've got Homer reading and Homer stories, and we're super proud of our, our digital product. But we know that there's something important about hands on play. We know there's value of co play. And so we've recently launched an activity center um, for parents. It's activitycenter.learnwithhomer.com. And this is really in response to what we've been hearing from parents and, and similar to what you said, uh, Brian, just this desire to kind of build things with these extra materials that are arriving at our house and things to keep us busy and occupied during um, the shelter in place. Um, and we've, we've created it so that parents can filter the ideas by the age of their child and even the messiness level. Um, and mess is something that has come up in a lot of conversations with parents. It can kind of be um, sort of a barrier to entry, like they're reluctant to, to have, you know, glitter. I, I was, I was um, sharing earlier how I used to host these craft parties when my kids were younger. And um, after the first year, I'm like, no more glitter in the house because I still have glitter on our chairs from the, from the first party about seven years ago. So how necessary is mess? And what's your philosophy on messes when it comes to scrap venting and using junk to create things? Well, you know, when I call, you know, the, the program Scrapkins, there are going to be some scraps involved. Sure. But, you know, most of this stuff is, um, you know, cardboard and paper scraps because we're, you know, we're putting things together. And I, you know, generally feel like you should be able to accomplish most of what the project uh, is with very little mess. So if we're talking about, you know, this puppet, we're really talking about cut paper yep. um, that we're gluing on. Uh, so you've got a little bit of glue, um, but you've also, you know, should be able to decorate most stuff with markers and crayons. So, you know, one of the, a really easy thing that we can do is this is actually like a little journal. It could be a comic book, but it's made out of a cereal box cover and you're just, you know, stapling paper pages yeah. inside. And, you know, this is just markers and crayons um, yeah. to decorate something. So I, I am, I'm anti-glitter too. Yeah. I don't really, you need to create all this stuff. Now, if you want to go uh, later on and paint your project, um, you know, this T-Rex uh, is a very bright color because we used acrylic paint on it. But mm -hmm. what I will often do is spend, you know, one session with just the construction. And then if you want to take it to the next level where you're using something like paint, you yeah. know, you have that as a separate day and you, and you put down the newspaper okay. and you really say, okay, we're just going to focus on this part as opposed to trying to accomplish it all at once where you know, it, it can get messy if um, yeah. you're not regulating it. I like that. I, it seems like your approach is just super accessible. You're really focusing on what we already have in the house. You know, most people have some type of crayons or markers, definitely some boxes laying around. So I really love that. I love that it feels inclusive of, of almost everybody's situation um, and that there's no glitter. I love that so much. <laughs> um, listen, Brian, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I know we could talk for much, much longer, um, but we'll part now. And I know you're gonna be back again tomorrow on another live session here on our Homer Facebook Live stream. So please tune back in 12.30. Brian's gonna be here to walk kids through the pirate ship. You wanna show us that pirate ship one more time? Yeah, so we're uh, gonna make this out of a milk carton, 
a couple of straws and the sails are actually made from cardboard tubes that we cut open. So Fantastic. those are some of the materials we're gonna to use tomorrow. Awesome. And thank you so much, Jody, for inviting me today. This was super fun to talk about this. Of course. No, this is a pleasure. Um, and I, I wish you the best of, of luck with your book and with, with your Facebook sessions as well, Brian. Um, again, parents, um, come prepared tomorrow with some cardboard if you've got it, some straws. Definitely bring your kids. This is a co-play, co-viewing situation. Um, and definitely check out Pirates of Smelly Cove on Homer Stories as well. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye.